What's up, party people? Welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and today, sit back, relax, and enjoy some Ares gameplay. I'm going to be doing a God Guide on Ares, a live God Guide, uh, which is unusual. This is how I started the God Guide series, and uh, I didn't have my voice, my video cam. I didn't have my, uh, I didn't have, uh, you know, I had my live voice. I had uh, computer, I didn't have the video cam, uh, I had my OBS, and this is how I started the series over a year ago. And so uh, I wanted to come back to the roots here for one of the most original gods in the game, Ares. As you can see, these are abilities, and we will talk about these as the game goes on. Um, but I just want to let you guys know, Ares is a powerhouse kind of a character. He's a great god, and uh, he has a lot of uh, amazing dynamics that he can bring to a team. He's very straightforward as well, and sometimes that's what I really like about Ares. Let's see who we are playing against here. Looks like there might be some physical damage to worry about, but that Freya magical damage I think is actually going to hurt a lot. So I'm actually going to start with a Void Stone here um, and increase my magical damage and also allow me to survive a little bit over that Kepri damage over time. Uh, some of that Freya burst that comes out, um, and I'm going to I'm going to hope that the Jibalanke and uh, Guan Yu and Chiron don't hurt me too much. Uh, so that's kind of the way I, I like to build with my Guardian sometimes. Starting off with a little bit of a defensive item just to start out, um, rather than the boots, because of course you don't have to be super mobile. Ares is a god that really restricts mobility for other characters. Uh, his number one shackles is a huge, huge ability uh, for a ton of damage and, and allows you, as you just see here, setting up the shackles onto the Guan Yu, basically going 100 to 0 him here. As you guys can see, such a big deal. Uh, and uh, we're going to attack the Kepri as well. We're going to throw, uh, is that our lightning storm? Oh, it is. Yes, it is. And we're going to take the Kepri out. And we're going to attack here. We're actually going to decide to go for... We're going to go for both, uh, and I'm going to hit that. We're basically just going to de-aside everybody. That's pretty much how we're going to do it. Um, I don't have enough mana for my ultimate, but if I did, I tell you, I'd rule the world. Uh, we don't have a lot of mana on our squad as well. Kebri is the only one. Oh, somehow, somehow Guan Yu uses ultimate as well. So we just basically wiped that, and I'm going to be backing right now. So you can see Ares just with uh, the fact that he has a uh, so much mobility uh, aspect of his kit that basically reduces characters' mobilities, making them uh, crippled so that they cannot move, they cannot run uh, away, they cannot jump away. Chains extend from Ares' shield, doing damage to all in its path. Hitting gods cripples them, preventing movement abilities, dealing damage every second, and slowing them and buffing Ares based on the amount uh, that, of damage that he's doing. So uh, it does minion damage as well, but the slow speed is 15% uh, per unique shackle. So if you can get three different shackles onto an enemy, you're actually going to get a little bit more buffed um, with a little bit more speed than if you just get one... Uh, uh, shackle, And I actually believe that that's not necessarily applying to each god. Uh, it's just applying to the unique shackles that you hit. So one shackle will do that. But if you hit another shackle, it's going to do something else. Ooh, so I missed the shackle, which was unfortunate there. Uh, but we've got a little bit of this ward here. Where I'm going to use my fire. And kind of the way you want to play Ares and the way you want to look at it is this. Uh, you have your shackles, and that's your main go-to. When you hit your shackle, all good things happen. Your team can follow up. That enemy is pretty screwed. Uh, but pretty much after that, oh, and we're going to get all these shackles here. We're going to basically say bye-bye. He's going to have to use that, but we're still going to probably be able to kill him. And that's how we do it here. We're going to use our ultimate in just a second. But no, nope, they back away smartly. Uh, I don't know if it's Jablonky. Oh, no. That's so sad. That's so sad. Oops. Uh, that was pretty, pretty sad there. I didn't use my ultimate. Uh, actually, he was CC immune at that point in the dash, and I just didn't grab him for some reason. Uh, and so that was, an, that was a little bit annoying. But anyways, a lot of you guys have been wanting to see how to play Ares, and pretty much it's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's, it's you hit the shackles. Um, that takes a little practice. That takes a little bit of, uh, you know, you going to the, uh, the workbench and kind of getting your time in. Um, it definitely is not the easiest thing in the world to do. But once you do that, you, once you hit the shackle, you basically set your team up for success. And after you do that... Uh, you know, you basically uh, use your fire onto the enemies and just put them in a bad spot. And if you have a team that's willing to follow you into battle, uh, you're going to be a very, very formidable opponent here. The Kepri getting the abduct, and again, none of them are even ready to go ahead and make any difference with that. Oh, I missed my shield, but we're going to basically go ahead with the damage here onto the Kepri. We're going to take him down. We've got a lot of good stuff happening here, um, as you can see. And even with a solid team, I'm going to tell them enemies behind us, uh, this Chiron is going to go down by one of my basic attacks. Almost. 
But we did basically put him in a bad, bad spot. The Chalk is here as well. He's going on to the Jibalanke. I'm going to hit this chain. We're going to hit this chain. We're going to hit this chain. And I'm going to hit this on the Kepri. We're going to hit some fire on him. And he's going to be a very, very unhappy Scarab. Let me tell you that. The damage is real. It's crazy. The Neath ultimate comes out, forcing him to abduct away. I'm going to tell him I'm out of mana. And that's just that, guys. And this is just this is crazy. I would expect... Uh, a surrender from the enemy team right now not that i would do it but i would just expect that from them we're about 100 points ahead uh we have so much push and that's the thing aries when you get good with him and really getting good is just learning how to hit your shackles when you learn how to do that you are basically going to be such a uh, a dynamo you're going to be so hard for uh you know your opponents to deal with and your team if they follow up with you is going to be so so much in a better position in terms of a team fight you're going to basically have the upper hand almost at all times now the combo that aries has that a lot of people uh will have aries a good aries and will need to know about is to basically use your ultimate here grab as many people as you can once you grab that ultimate Whoever comes, you're going to hit them with your shackles. And that means they're not going to be able to move right after that ult. And that's going to be a big deal. So, Jablanke uses that to counter me. I'm going to have to get out. And I do take, I do die there because I just get a lot of damage coming on me. And I get the damage from the, uh, from the tower as well onto me as well. But, uh, really the key there was that using the ultimate to uh, put people into that CC immune position or that CC position where they're stunned for a second allows you to then hit your shackle. So you want to you wanna not use your shackle prior to that if you're going to use your ult. You know, that way you won't have your shackle to keep them in place. Really, the damage comes from your teammates being able to then go ahead and throw everything that they have in one single spot without missing. That's the key to Ares. And so when you realize that, uh, you're basically going to want to keep them there as much as possible and when you use your ultimate That's what is going to help with the shackles. So we've got a uh, Kepri shackled here He's not going to be able to abduct I'm basically going to try and get in his face so that when he does try to abduct uh, He's going to have to abduct into me and we'll keep him there But again, you see three shackles just basically killing someone and you you see so much damage that could come out from that And that's the, the strength of Ares. Ares number two is basically just a protection and a CC reduction ability So once you apply it uh, it lasts for about eight seconds and it gives you uh, some CC reduction. It gives you some protection. And for each shackle enemy, the protection buffs are increased. So that means you can actually apply it while you are shackling someone and gain some extra protections. Uh, that means it's also additional for enemies. So again, for that shackle, uh, if you have one enemy shackle, you have another enemy shackle. Oh, I missed. But if you have one enemy shackle, then you have another enemy shackle, then you have another, you're going to be able to gain 21 extra um protections from that the shackle bonus you see seven so if you have three unique enemies 21 will add it to that and that'll be added on to 40 protections and that's 61 extra protections you're going to be able to have for eight seconds so in a, a moment of crisis a moment of panic or if you're aggressing onto the enemy team in a difficult situation and you're going towards their base you could play very aggressive as Ares. you want to be able to hit that number two while you're shackling your opponents now the other main thing you want to get with Ares, if you if you are maybe less experienced oh my god wow what a dodge if you are maybe less experienced, is to basically be able to go ahead. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and ult here and hope to grab the Freya. And we do have her. And we're going to take her down. Yeah, the Freya is putting me up. But you know what? That doesn't make a big difference to me. Uh, I basically got what I need here. Now I'm going to shackle the Chiron. We're going to put him down. We're going to hit our number two here. And you see I'm going to get my protections up. And we're basically going to go ahead and kill the Chiron here. We might even kill the Kepri uh, if we're able to. Yeah, we do go ahead and kill the Kepri. And though I die, I get the double kill. And uh, our team basically is dominating so badly that it doesn't really matter. You see, I'm 5, 2, and 9, and I'm a tank. And I'm building... Um, like I said, you know, I like to go for a little bit of that damp. Voice Stone's a great item for me. I really love that to start. May not be your cup of tea, but I really enjoy it because it gives me magical power and magical protection and it reduces the magical protection of enemies within 55 units by 15. I really appreciate that. As a magical tank like Ares, you're going to be doing a ton of damage. And so this is a way for you to really put yourself in a position to do even more and really be that much of a of a. Of a game changer pretty much so uh this is one of the things that you want to pick up with aries almost assuredly that will make you that much more difficult and make your attack and your presence that much more felt uh, is blink blink is going to allow you to blink in not having to run a, run into people and basically just ult them and that's like the biggest the biggest aspect of this because uh let's see jibalanke still does not have beads so he's going to be a great person to uh blink on as you can see here we're going to blink in and now we're going to hit him here. We're going to throw all of our damage onto him here. And we're basically going to take him out. And that's how you do it, guys. That is pretty much... Uh... 
in the simplest way, the simplest thing I can understand, that's how you do it. Let's wait till he gets off his horse because he is CC uh, immune there. He cannot dash now. We're going to basically throw this here. We're going to shackle. Uh, I'm going to basically be attacked by the Freya, but she doesn't see the Neath behind her. She's going to probably kill me. However, let's see what we can do. Let's hit the shackle. Oh, man. And she uh, does not get killed. Now, I, ho I was hoping my Neath would be able to kill her in time while I was doing that little dance. And the Kefri just standing in front of the Neath saying, no, nope, you're going to hit me if you want to hit. That was pretty funny. Uh, so, yeah, that wasn't enough. Uh, but you see here, I'm still getting a lot of magical focus. And so my next item that I'm going to be building is a magical item. Uh, one of the things about Ares Passive is these, these aura items I usually don't build. But one of the things about it is that... When you build an ore item, you actually, because of his passive, you get 30 additional magical power. So again, you become more and more... Woo! There's only one person I really want. It's the Freya. There's only one person I really want. It's the Freya. It's the Freya. Oh, yeah. Come on back. Oh, I think she got revived in there because, uh, of course, Ares Ultimate does do damage. Oh, get shackled, bro. Back it up. And you see people just run away after the shackles. And, of course, that protections, those protections get added to uh, your, enemy, your, your teammates standing around. So that's one of the cool things. I missed that shackle. Otherwise, that would have killed him. And, of course, the Shibalanke ult just coming out. Just, just for, oh, oh, not just for fun here. We're going to see if we can go ahead and do something here to the Shibalanke. And we can. And uh, we can. So it's great. They're still playing this game. Gives me more time to talk to you guys about Ares. Um, so each completed aura, uh, aura item that Ares owns grants him 30 additional magical power, which means if you complete these aura items here, you actually just go here into aura, and you see all these items, Voidstone being one of them, Heartward, uh, Sovereignty, and Mystical Mail being the ones you would ideally get on Ares unless you have a healer, which way you would maybe get Pestilence, um, are pretty much the items that will help him to gain an extra... 30 to 120 magical power if you happen to get four of them, which I might be getting in this build. Um, so it's really, really intriguing, uh, you know, with Ares and just how you build him. He's just one of those gods that's, you know, for some characters, he's fantastic. Uh, you know, for some professional players, he's fantastic. And you see the ultimate comes out. Uh, and for some professional players, you know, he's not. He's not a god that's always going to be dominant because he is kind of a one-trick pony. He shackles you. And, of course, you can use beads to get out of that. And, of course, his ultimate you can use beads to get out of as well. So it's not like you just can't deal with Ares. He's just a hard god to deal with, and you have to deal with him. That's one of the things that makes him very dangerous on a team that you have a lot of other damage or a lot of other CC, you pretty much have to go about uh, handling his uh, his abilities, otherwise you're going to be screwed. Um, I know I didn't mention the fire, but the fire, as you can pretty much see in, in my gameplay, is pretty much something you use to follow up after you've shackled someone because those shackles last for a while and they buff you with speed. You could use the fire to stay in their face, and basically it will take off not only damage, it will take off a percentage of their health as well, uh, which is pretty incredible. Uh, if you think about that, that starts to be a huge tick of damage and that's why you could see I hundred to zero a lot of people as Ares and if you look at the damage actually you'll be looking at 10,000 damage here as Ares uh, that's a that's a pretty big amount of damage for how long this game lasted. I could see me probably reaching into the 25k, and I've seen a lot of us, I've seen actually a lot of people uh, win the damage marker as an Ares, because he can do so much damage as a tank. Uh, his ultimate is very, very obviously, you know, what you can see, a, a big circular CC that brings everyone back towards him and stuns them for a moment in time, and uh, for that, uh, really remember, the thing is, you want to keep your uh, shackles available to be able to shackle someone after that ultimate. Uh, if you're just shackling and then basically they almost get away, another way to do it is to use your ultimate right after you finish shackling, throwing their kit, so that, like you saw in that moment with the Freya, if she didn't have the Kepri's Blessing on her, uh, she would have basically, or she didn't have beads, she might have used beads, but pretty much... Uh, that Capri Blessing or Beads saved her, but if most people, when they don't have that exhausted, they use it for your shackles or something like that, you then can ult and bring them right back, and now they're right in front of you, you can throw fire on them, your enemy team, your teammates can basically kill them with damage, and uh, it puts them in a horrible situation, because now they're right back where they started, right in front of you, potentially getting shackled again if it's, got, if it's off cooldown, and you're screwed. The other aspect of this build is the cooldown. You want to build areas with full cooldown if you can, um, because that means his abilities are up more, and if people buy beads, that makes them less effective, because your, your ultimate's going to be up much faster than their beads are, especially if they have level 1 or 2 beads, but if they have level 3, it's still going to be up faster, so this is kind of how I would recommend building Ares, a couple of aura items, as well as the uh, Shoes of Focus and Breastplate of Valor. That's how I like to do it. Of course, if you get to the fifth and sixth slot, 
and you feel a little greedy, like in this game, I might have been able to go for a Soul Reaver, which is a really good item, or an Ethereal Staff, which would just make me a lot tankier. It'd make me give me more health, it'd give me more mana, and it would give me uh, additional magic power based on my health. Uh, so that's one of those good items that I like for tanks, that and Soul Reaver as well. And uh, thanks so much, guys. That's going to be it for this Ares God Guide. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry it wasn't a full game, but as you can see, when you do well with Ares, people just see that there's really no way out. And so this should be encouraging for you guys who want to go play Ares and kind of just needed a kickstart in terms of how do I really go about doing it. Of course, I didn't cover the I, the exact abilities in depth as I wanted, as much as I wanted, but um, you can obviously look at the tooltips, and if you have any questions about exactly how they work, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below, and by the time I answer, I will have all of those answers for you guys, uh, so you know exactly how Ares works, and you can use this video as a resource in the comment section as a resource to go ahead and get all of your Ares questions answered uh, that you may have. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more God Guides, gameplays, combo tips, top fives, and all that other good stuff here at Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and as always, never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.